I had a, a, a no barbecue this year. I've given up entertaining my friends because they never reciprocate. And if they do reciprocate, they're usually terrible, cheap barbecues. So I don't go anyway. When I do a barbecue, I spend a lot of money and have really high end food. If they invite you back, it's usually a few Hebrew nationals and a cheap, uh, you know, a beer from Mexico that was uh, out of date that they found in the back of the refrigerator. So I stopped. Uh, I stopped going. So I was just into one of my moods of leave me alone. I can't wait till the holiday is over. It's it's cold out here, by the way. I know the East Coast is sweltering right now, like 90, 100, 110 degrees. And I live in San Francisco because it is the most beautiful place on Earth in the summer. It was 49 this morning. The fog comes in blowing over the over the hills out of the out of the uh, ocean. And you're like, uh, you need, I need an overcoat and a scarf and a wool hat today, which I love. I adore it. My face is cool. I need gloves. <laughs> People don't understand it. I mean, I'm, if you're a heat lover, God bless you. I'm not. You know, I, I could do without waiting for global warming. So the fact is, I figured enough is enough. I ordered a pizza. I just wanted a pizza for July 4th at night. I, I've been on a no-dairy diet for about... Um, a year and eight, uh, six months now because I had uh, some very severe aches in my, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you point blank, in my uh, in my arches and my hands. And I remember writing my own books and I said, Dr. Heal thyself, read your own books. And I said, my God, that's right. Don't eat dairy if you're allergic to it, if you uh, are deficient in lactase, as I apparently am. Cut the dairy out. Well, I cut it out and after a few weeks, all these severe aches went away. I'm telling you, it was so bad. I was seeing foot doctors and this and that. So I haven't had pizza in a year and a half, which I cr I'm crazy about pizza. I crave it. But a great doctor friend of mine taught me 20 years ago that we usually are addicted to that which we are uh, allergic to. We are addicted to that which we are allergic to. Did you know that? The things you crave are the things that make you sick, whether it be in foods or drink or sex. Think about what I just said to you. So anyway, I broke the addiction to dairy. I mean, 100% none, zero, and all the pains went away. So I order a pizza. Now, here's the first mistake. I ordered a pizza. Here's the second mistake. I ordered a pizza from someone who's not Italian, who just bought a local uh, uh, pizza franchise, who can hardly speak English. Here's my third mistake. I believed it would be there when he said it would be there. Here's my fourth mistake. I blew up on the phone when it wasn't there on time. And I'll tell you the rest of the story when I return right here on the Savage Nation. Savage. Yeah, so when when we left off when we left off on that side story, I was not going to to do a barbecue because I'm sick and tired of entertaining friends who don't reciprocate. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to stay home and have a pizza, right? Is that what? And then the, so okay, so I call a pizza place and I haven't had one in a year and a half. <clears throat> and the guy answers. I must tell you, he was not Italian. That's okay. I could hardly make out his accent, but it sounded like some kind of lower Shanghainese accent to the best of my ability to understand it, which unto itself is not a problem, in that I don't really care who owns a pizzeria if they could still make pizza. For example, the Brazilians make the best pizza in America, incidentally. Brazilian pizza is by and large the best. Uh, well, many of them are for Italian heritage, but that's irrelevant. So I, didn't ask, so I said, okay, how long will the pizza take? Now, I want to tell you what a large pizza costs in my community. 30 smackers. I said, $30 for a large pizza? Are you kidding me? No, he says, that's the price. I figured, all right, I'm not going to quibble. I just didn't want, have the strength for it. All right, send it. I said, but be sure you send the condiments. Why comment? What do you mean comment? I said condiments. I didn't say comments. I didn't say send me the comments. I said, send me the condiments. What? Come on. I said, I want the Parmesan cheese. I want the red pepper. You know, all of those little packets of, sh of garbage that cost them nothing. Okay. How long will it take? He says, 45 minutes. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, it's 6.30, so I figured, all right, I'm hungry. By 7.15, the pie will be there. I call a friend in the city. Now, remember, I'm not in San Francisco at this time. My house is about 30 minutes out of the city. Call a friend. I said, you want to come over? Okay, I'll come over. My friend arrives from San Francisco, and the pizza is still not there. Now it's an hour. I call up the friendly pizza man, and I say, I called you an hour ago. Where's the pizza? And he argues with me. He says, no, it was 59 minutes ago. I said, but you said 45 minutes. We're running late. And he says, don't get so excited. Here's the part that burned me. He said, don't get so excited. It's only a pizza. He had the nerve to say that to me. It's only a pizza. You hear the guy buys a franchise and he's telling me it's only pizza. So I'm boiling already. But I figured, look, they could spit in it or worse. I didn't say anything. I bit my tongue. 
I said, make sure the man has the condiments. Another 15 minutes already, my neck is swollen from anger. Ring, ring goes the bell. I open the gate. A guy arrives with the pizza. And uh, I said, open it up. I want to make sure it's hot. He looks at me like with a lower, like his lower jaw is hanging, like a slat turn. Like he just came off a pyramid somewhere in the uh, South America. He was just busy working on a pyramid. And he said, he, I said, where are the condiments? He says, I don't know what you're moving. Like in broken English, what are you talking about? You didn't ask for them. I said, get it out of here. I don't want it. Take it. Goodbye. Take it. I don't care. Goodbye. Get out of here. Get off my property. I threw him off the property. I call up the owner. I said, do you know that your driver showed up without the, 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 the cheese? And the, so he says to me, well, you mean he didn't have it in his car? I said, you're asking me what he had in his car? And we had an argument. And I said, you know what? You're never going to make it in this town if you have that attitude. You don't belong in the food business. And I hung up. So then I got, I'm starving. Meanwhile, I invite a friend out from the city and there's nothing on the table except homegrown garlic, which I had chopped up and put in oil. And I had just picked some oregano from my garden, from a little garden I keep, and put the oregano out. I mean, I really like to eat right, okay? Meanwhile, there's no pizza. So I said, let's jump in the car. Jump in the car. We go to the corner. There's a Brazilian pizza guy. I call it. And by the time I get there, it's ready. I eat it. I get it. We're back. Boom. We were so hungry. We ordered two slices while we were waiting for the pie to be hot. But that's the pizza story. It just shows you today that nothing is right. Nothing is right in this country anymore. It's the attitude. The work ethic is gone. There's no desire to please the customer. And there's no desire in the government to please the taxpayer. Everybody has a middle finger in the air. 